Rising country music singer-songwriter Connor Smith was born to write songs. His debut album, Didn't Go Too Far, features six original tracks, including Learn From It and I Hate Alabama. The Nashville native continues to feed his growing fan base with new music as he was recently named to prestigious lists such as Spotify's Hot Country Artist to Watch for 2022, Amazon Music's 2022 Amazon Artist to Watch, and Artist to Watch 2022, the Pandora 10 list. Our media team recently invited Connor Smith to our media studio to hear more about his country music journey before he heads out on tour with Thomas Rhett this summer. Enjoy! Thank you so much for coming here and uh, joining me for this interview today. Tell me a little bit about yourself. Um, when did you discover your passion for music? Growing up in Nashville, I just kind of learned really early that being a songwriter was a job. And so when I was six years old, I started writing country songs and that's just kind of always what my dream was. I played baseball and I wrote songs. And so uh, when I was 16, I ended up getting my first publishing deal uh, where I basically got paid to write songs. I would go to school till about 11.30, I would leave and go write songs at 12 on Music Row and I come back and play in the baseball game at four. Growing up, I was always so fascinated by songwriters and uh, the way that you could craft stories in three minutes and really kind of take somebody on a journey and say something in a country song that you, you, you can't even say in conversation. And so for me, I like studied songwriters, like Ashley Gorley and Josh Osborne, people like Ben Hayslip and Zach Crow, these people that I now get to work with. I always looked up to those people so much. Can you talk a little bit more about how you got started in the industry? I did a cover of Cop Car and I posted it on Instagram. The night I posted that song, a guy named Zach Crow who wrote it, I was sitting at dinner and uh, I was talking to my family and I said, if I could write with anybody in Nashville, if I could work with anybody, like Zach Crow would be the top of that list. So I, I post this cover of Cop Car and the next day I get an email from my now manager, Brad Belanger, and he said, I stumbled across this video I would love to meet and hear about your goals. I'm 16 at the time. I was kind of freaking out, like this is wild. We ended up at Zach's house the next day and, and we just kind of started working together. We all kind of felt really kind of called towards each other, I think. And, it was very much a God thing all the way around. What does it feel like for your work to be recognized? I've always said my, my whole theory on Nashville, on country music, your goal is to have as many people in this town want you to succeed as possible. And so that's just been my whole thing, just in building relationships inside my team, outside my team, talking to every person, going to every coffee, going to every meeting, because I want as many people to know me well enough to be able to say, that's a good dude and, and I, I enjoy when he succeeds. And so to have people, uh, Spotify, Pandora, Amazon, Apple, to all, have all of them kind of come and be like, we want to help him succeed uh, is, a, is a really special thing on, on a lot of levels for me. Tell me a little bit about your debut album, Didn't Go Too Far. So Didn't Go Too Far is a collection of songs that, that means a lot to me because I think it shows a lot of different sides of who I am as an artist, as a, as a writer, and the songs are really personal, um, but they also are songs that uh, I felt like a lot of people could relate to. I'm excited to continue to put out songs that show different sides of that and continue just to build the story of who I am. Talk to me a little bit about your songwriting process, like you wrote for of the six tracks that are on your new album. Yeah. The writing the writing of the song is the heart behind everything for me that that kind of the part that matters the most and the part I love the most. You know, every song is super different. Every idea comes from a different place. There's some songs that are just I just told a story that happened to me. You know, I Hate Alabama was the only song on there that I didn't write and that song was sent to me uh, and I was a big Tennessee fan and I also love the way that it kind of told this story of this heartbreak and, and I fell in love with it and it kind of really changed a lot of things for me in my career of really people starting to understand and know who I was. So what is it like being a Christian artist in this in this secular industry? Yeah. yeah, I think it influences a lot. I think it just influences my life and my decisions. You know, it's, it's something I, I figure out every day and it's a battle because uh, I think as the Lord elevates uh, anybody in any career, the enemy is going to attack harder. And so uh, it's a pretty wild thing to, to be out there and um, kind of have the world thrown at you all in once. And so for me, it's all about putting the right people around me as my team, as my producer, as my manager, and, and as my band, just the people I do life with. I want them to pe be people that know who I am uh, beyond the songs and know who I want to be. And then also just being very intentional about to maintain that quiet time, continue to kind of humble myself before the Lord. It's kind of what I try to remind, remind myself every day. And the industry of being an artist, you're building an entire business and company sur surrounded on you. You know, it's all focused on how you look and how you sound and how you write. I really try to put a lot of people in my life that will kind of just center me and, and don't care about the music at all and, and couldn't care less how, how much success I have as long as I'm staying true to who I am as a, as a person. Musically, what do you think your goal for 2022 is? You know, we're getting to hit the road with Thomas Wright all summer and do 40 shows with him starting in June, which is a wild. You know, I've, I've been to every single Thomas Rhett show when he came to Nashville, so now to be a part of that show and open up for him is, is a dream come true. But I'm most excited to kind of continue to tell my story. You know, it's, it's really just one step at a time. And lastly, what is any advice you would have for any aspiring artist? Being an artist is the most, in any format, 
is the most vulnerable thing you can do. Everything you're doing can be critiqued in the same way when you're shooting a film. Everything can just be be critiqued. And that's a tough place to be. You know, for me as an artist, it's like my look, my songs, my voice, it all is up for criticism from the world and social media and from people around you. So it's making sure that you have confidence in yourself and you've been able to look yourself in the mirror every day and be like, I know who that person is and I respect that person. Have confidence in your art and know that that is truly who you are. And if you can walk in that, then it doesn't matter what people say because you're doing it for you and you're doing it for the Lord. Because at the end of the day, all creativity is inspired by the Lord. It's our praise, it's our worship back. As long as you're continuing to give it up to Him and, and let Him do with it, what, he's, what He provides, you don't have to sustain. And that's kind of the biggest lesson I'm, I'm growing into over this last year. Thank you so much for joining me. Absolutely, thanks for having me.